Hello everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to show you the basics of what you need to know to use charts on TradingView, which is where you can look at stock market quotes, cryptocurrency quotes, any of the financial markets. So when you go to TradingView.com, I recommend that you create an account even if you aren't going to use the pro version, it's free, and then you can save certain chart layouts. And then you're going to want to find the symbol of the market that you'd like to look at in the actual item that you'd like to look at. So um, you can just go up here to ticker and you could search for uh, whatever you're looking for. So uh, in this video, I'm just going to use Bitcoin since that's a popular one that people have been looking at. Um, so I could just search BTC and then I see all the BTC pairs. So with US dollars, euros, and then over here, I can see the exchange that we are looking at for the listed price. So you can choose uh, whichever one you'd like. So say we were going to look at uh, Bitcoin to dollars on Coinbase. I could click on that and it's going to bring up uh, kind of an overview. And then to get to the chart, we can just click on interactive chart and that will bring up the interactive chart. Now I already have it open, so I'm just gonna close this tab. So here's what our chart looks like. So I'm just going to go over all of the different options that you have to use here in TradingView charts. I am not a financial advisor. I'm actually more of a software advisor. So this is software advice, not financial advice. Okay, so first of all, um, we're looking at uh, Bitcoin, as I mentioned, and you'll notice that we can see that because we have BTC USD in the top left. And then just to the right, we have our uh, time interval. Now yours probably doesn't have the five minute, 50 minute, you probably just have one drop down. Um, so you'll notice that when you click on the drop down, you can choose your time frame. And if you hit the star next to one of these time frames, then it adds it to your toolbar here. Um, so we could look at say a two hour chart instead of the day chart. And you'll notice that our chart changes. Uh, so you can zoom in using your mouse wheel. If you click and hold, you can drag um, across the chart. We'll get into some additional features of um, kind of how our chart looks and the time intervals and all of that as we move through this video. But let's go back up here to the top and look at the other options we have. So we have the uh, option to choose which type of candles or the chart type that we'd like to look at. So obviously candles are the most common one, but you could choose a different one from this list if you wanted to. Um, you can compare uh, one symbol to another symbol up here at the top. Uh, we have our indicators. So this is a pretty big deal. Let's add some indicators to our BTC USD chart. So if I click on the indicator drop down, uh, well, it's actually not a drop down. You'll notice that a window pops up. And this is where we can choose some of uh, the indicators that we'd like to overlay on top of our chart. As you can see, uh, the one that we already have on here, I believe this comes on by default, is the volume indicator which we can see it's listed up here in the top left, and then we can see the volume down here on the bottom. Um, I could hide and show this indicator by clicking on the eye symbol, as you can see. I could click on the gear symbol uh, to edit the settings of this indicator. So I could edit um, the colors that appear in green and red. I could change that. Um, I could change the width of the line if I wanted to. You know, uh, this is for the uh, this line right here, the orange line. Um, so you have a lot of customization options and I'm not going to really go into all that detail. I just want to show you where you can look at that and then you can kind of play with those things yourself. So let's just click OK on this for now and go back to indicators. So I'm just going to click on indicators. Now let's just add a few indicators that we might want on a BTC USD chart. Let's add some moving averages. So um, a lot of the good indicators that you're going to want to use are in technical analysis and then built-ins. Uh, so when we get to this menu, you'll notice that we also have uh, the Bollinger Bands. Uh, I have that favorited. Uh, but if we scroll down, and actually we, we could search. So let's just search for moving. you notice that we have some moving averages now. So I could actually click the star to the left of moving average if I wanted that to get added to my favorites as well. And then to use a moving average, I'm just going to click on it. Let's close this window for now. You'll notice that a moving average was added to my chart and it is a nine day moving average. So if we wanted to change the interval that we look at, we can just click on the gear icon and we can go to inputs in the box that pops up. And I could change this to say a 50 day moving average. Okay, so you notice that the average line changes um, and we can add as many moving averages as we'd like depending on what level of account you have on TradingView. I think that you can only add uh, three indicators at once on a free account on TradingView. Uh, so to add more, you'd have to upgrade. So that's obviously up to you. But you can always, you know, you can delete the indicator off and add in a new one. It's just, it's kind of annoying when you're looking at m multiple moving averages at once because if you have three moving averages on here, all of a sudden you can't have volume, you can't have RSI, you can't have the MACD. Uh, so it is limiting in that sense, but I think that this is the best platform to look at charts with. So if you need to look at charts and, you, and you're willing to spend the money, 
it's totally worth it to do here on TradingView. Um, let's add one more indicator and then we'll move on from the indicators. Um, so we added one moving average. Like I said, we could add multiple. I would just click on moving average again. But let's go ahead and let's add a MACD just so we can see something different here. So if I search for MAC, you'll notice there's the MACD. I can click on that. It gets added to my chart down here at the bottom. Um, so I can actually click and I can kind of rework uh, how that's displayed. I can go over here to where it says MACD uh, towards the bottom left and I could click on the gear icon to edit the format uh, and the style of this if I'd like. So you can see you've got your fast length, your slow length. Um, you can kind of choose that if you're a financial person, you'll uh, know better what to do with, with that than I do. Uh, but this is where you have all of your different options and then you can change your style as well. So you'll notice that uh, you can play around with these as we make that bolder, these pink lines get bolder. Uh, same with this. So you can kind of format it to however you'd like, uh, but the important part is knowing where you can do that. Uh, so I'm just going to click OK on that for now. As you're using TradingView, you can save templates uh, so you don't have to add all these indicators each time that you look at a particular chart. Um, so I can click up here on Study Templates, and then I could click Save Indicator Template. There are also some default templates that you could uh, take a look at as well. So I could just click on Displaced EMA, and you'll notice that here's our displaced EMA. Um, now I didn't save the one we just used, so we'd have to, I guess, recreate it. But um, when, if I did want to save it, I could just click Save Indicator Template. Let's go ahead and let's add one more indicator. Let's add, add that MACD again. Oop, I clicked too quick. Search for the MACD. Okay, and this is a good opportunity to show you that you can just click the X to delete an indicator. So there's our MACD. So now we can go up here to Templates, and we could say Save Indicator Template. We could give our indicator template a name and click Save. So now uh, when we go to any chart, any symbol, any comparison, we could go to Templates, and then we could choose our test template. Okay. So you can also set alerts here in TradingView. So if you want to get alert uh, when a symbol hits a certain price, you could create an alert. Uh, so we could say, you know, Bitcoin USD crossing value when it, let's say it uh, drops below 10 to 50, then I want to get uh, an alert one time, uh, pop up, play sound, you can go through all that. So um, that's how you can get some price alerts he right here in TradingView if you'd like as well. There's also an uh, undo button. So this button up here uh, will undo any change. So sometimes you do a weird uh, reformatting thing and you just want to go back, you can use that button as well. You can actually, if you go over here to the right, you can actually save uh, this particular chart um, for this symbol, which is useful when we start using these tools over here on the left, which I'm about to talk about. Um, so if I click on the drop down, you'll notice that uh, where it says save, um, I could, it, right now it already is saved as unnamed, uh, but I could, you know, rename it and I could call this test as well. We'll call it test one. Click save so you can see now our chart is saved up there so that every time uh, we come and look at this symbol, we have all of our drawing tools that we've used before are on the chart. So I think that's a good segue. Let's take a look at some of these drawing tools. So again, we're looking at Bitcoin. Let's go back to the day view and we'll do some kind of general drawing tools. So let's say we want to draw some trend lines on our Bitcoin chart. I can go over here to the left and I can choose uh, this first tool. And you, if you click the arrow next to any of these tools, a drop down appears with a whole bunch more options. Uh, so you can see there's all your different options uh, for trend lines and arrows and all that sort of stuff uh, in this first tool. So I'm actually just going to use the extended option because I just want some like kind of full time trend lines. And uh, why don't we start by uh, just making a, a trend line on what may look like a bit of a bearish trend here. So if I click once, it starts our trend line and then I can choose the second spot and you'll see that that trend line is now on my chart. Uh, just like when we looked at the indicators, we can uh, modify how these trend lines look. So I could go up here uh, with the trend line selected. I could change the color so I can make it red. I can change the width if I'd like. Um, you can uh, duplicate these. If I go over here to the clone copy section, I could clone this indicator and then I could take my clone and I could drag it here. So I have kind of the same uh, trend uh, angle here. And I could drop my cloned indicator there. So we have that bearish trend right there. Um, then I can go ahead and I could put some indicators, uh, here, trend lines here for this uh, kind of short term bullish trend that we may or may not be seeing. Um, so that's how you can use this first tool over here. The second tool is great one. This is where we can uh, use different things like uh, Fibonacci retracements and uh, 
Fibonacci extensions. So I could click on the Fib retracement tool here and I could go ahead and I could choose say my starting point and I can drag it all the way up here to the top. And then so then I can see, you know, here's my uh, 0.618 retracement level. So, you know, that's where we drop down to here. That's where we're fighting at right here. Um, so that's how you can use your fib tool. You can, you know, you can use all of these tools in here the exact same way. Uh, some of them you have to click one time, two times, three times. It all depends on the tool that you're using. I'm not going to go through all these tools, but that's where these tools uh, are, and that's where you can access them. So going down, um, you've got kind of your uh, tool where you can just kind of paint symbols. So you could add your rectangles and triangles. You could just do a brush if you wanted to uh, and just draw kind of freestyle on the chart here. Um, the next one down is where you can add your patterns. So if we wanted to add, say, like an Elliott impulse wave pattern, I could uh, click on that tool and then I could say, OK, this is my first wave is from zero to here. Then I've got two. Now I've got three, four, five. OK, so there's my impulse wave. Now I could go over here and I could say, now we've got, uh, you know, an ABCD correction. I have no idea. Again, this is just, I'm a, I'm a software guy, not a financial guy. A, B, C, OK? Um, so that's how you can use uh, that tool as well. Uh, the next one, you have your uh, forecasts. Um, so I could take a look at, if I wanted to set up a long position, um, I could click here. And I could move this around so that I have my, you know, my stop zone, my target zone, we could, uh, you know, do something like this. Um, so you can take a look what that looks like. Uh, down here at the bottom, we have a few other useful features. Um, one of them is the eye symbol, which will just hide all of our drawing tools. So, you've, you know, you're playing with your chart and you say, man, you know, I've got so much stuff on here and I, I want to keep it because I'm using it in a trade or whatever, but I can't even see what's happening. You can uh, just click the eye symbol to hide. Uh, all of the drawing tools. And then you can also um, remove the drawing tools by clicking on the trash can down here at the bottom as well. Just a couple more things I want to show you is uh, you can adjust the scale of like say your pricing. So let's go to maybe like a 15 minute chart. We'll zoom right in there. And let's delete this right there. Okay, so um, if I wanted to change the scaling, I could go over here to the right and I could actually drag on the scale and you'll notice that it changes it for me which can be useful in certain situations and it can be deceiving in other situations. So be careful of how you use that. But uh, this might be the most useful tip I give you here in TradingView and you might have figured it out on your own as well. But at any point when you're using TradingView uh, charts, you can right click on your chart and you get this drop down menu that is like all of the options you need, right? So one of them is the reset chart option. So this will reset all of our scales. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, both our uh, time scale and our price scale. So that reset chart option is really useful, uh, but you can go to specific dates. Um, you can go down here to price scale and time scale, and you can customize uh, a whole bunch of stuff. So we can change the axes that the price scale is on. Uh, we can choose whether we want to auto scale it, or we could lock our scale. Uh, we could go by percentage. Um, you can then just also click on scales properties down here at the very bottom and you get a pop-up window and look at all the options we have here. Again, I don't have time uh, to go through all this and I don't think you want me to go through all of this in this video, uh, but again, it's important to show you where you can access this because now uh, you can completely customize the style of your uh, prices on the right side there. Um, all sorts of options in here. Again, go to percentages, you can choose our margins. So. Uh, if you're not getting enough space above your price highs, you can add more of a top margin. I think I might have actually done that. Uh, so yours might look a little different. It might look more like this, which I think is annoying because then I don't, it doesn't show me kind of the big picture, the macro picture. So uh, I like to add a little bit of margins to my charts. Uh, so that's probably a pretty good tip as well. You can choose your time zone. Um, so that's pretty important as well. If you're trading with these charts, you obviously want to know uh, at what time in your local time you need to be looking and that you want your alerts set for. Um, so those are a bunch of great options right there. Uh, just a couple more things uh, down here at the bottom. You can add notes to your charts if you'd like. If you use Pine Script Editor, uh, I don't. Uh, but you can access that here as well. And then you can also connect a lot of exchanges to TradingView and then you can trade through TradingView. It seems like it would probably be a pretty good option. So you could do that by opening the trading panel down here at the bottom. And then also um, one of the main uses for the TradingView website, other than using all the charts and everything, is actually looking at the charts that other people 
uh, are publishing. So you can publish your ideas down here at the bottom. Now this is dangerous, right? That means anybody can publish a chart. And yes, they can. Um, and you can see kind of who the more reputable people are on TradingView. But like anything, especially when we're talking about uh, finances, you, you have to draw your own conclusion, right? So uh, you never want to look at one chart that somebody's published and say, oh, well, that's, that looks right to me. I'm going to buy or sell based on that chart. You need to look at, you know, 10 charts, draw three of your own charts, and kind of come up with your own final conclusion. So make sure that you're fully doing all of your research and never just listen to one person, especially when it comes here to financial advice. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And if you want to see more technology tips and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you for today. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.